Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of Inside the Bunker. I'm your host, Keith Bunker. I want to th- start off by saying thank you for all the support that all of my followers on Twitter, Facebook, my friends, and my personal life have given me. I, it has been a journey, and I am so happy to finally be able to launch the podcast after years of talking about it. My first guest today is going to be a friend of mine that I have been talking to for a few months now uh, through the 24 Universe Facebook group. He's the host of the 20 Years of 24 podcast. He's done many interviews with a lot of the cast, crew, directors, everybody that's been involved with the production of 24. Uh, So good to get into that. What is 24? 24 to me is the best action, adventure, drama, you know, government thriller of our era. It aired from 2001 to 2010. It's Stars Kiefer Sutherland, Mary Lynn Ricecub, Dennis Haysbert. There's plenty of actors, a lot of character actors that you'll n- notice if you watch the show that have been on the show. And it's a show that takes place in real time. What that means, every hour of the show is one hour of real time. So each season, um, minus season nine and Legacy, which was a spinoff show, are 24 episodes long. And they literally take place of an entire day. The first season's from midnight till midnight the following day. But the show does an amazing job of keeping you on the edge of your seat, ending with a cliffhanger of every episode. Yes, some of the plot lines are trite and sometimes, you know, border on the extraordinary. However, it always will keep you, like I said, on the edge of your seat. It's amazing. I advise anyone that has not seen it to watch it. I am a huge collector of all memorabilia. It had a video game that came out on PlayStation 2 that I love and still own. Um, as you see behind me, for those of us on YouTube, it's I have pretty much almost anything that you could think of made from 24, including a signed script uh, that was signed by Howard Gordon, who is the creative, he's one of the executive producers and writers from the show, as well as Mary Lynn Rice, Cub, and Kiefer Sutherland, who I've met a couple times as well. But... Uh, watch it. It's on Hulu if you're in the U.S. Uh, without ads. Amazon Prime if with ads, and also on Disney Plus in Canada and over the world. You can watch it as well. So please, I, it's highest recommended show. Uh, we'll be talking about it a lot on this channel and a few more episodes coming up as well. I will have deep dives into each season, my favorite things about each season, and so forth. And without further ado. Please welcome my first ever guest to Inside the Bunker, Ryan Richardson. The following interview takes place inside the bunker. Events occur in real time. Thank you today for joining me inside the bunker. I wanted to start off today with my uh, established guest, uh, Ryan, from the 20 Years of 24 podcast. He is the host, uh, also does the... Uh, you're the People in Your Neighborhood podcast. I've listened to a few episodes of that. I know you've you've been been great at doing that as well. And you have a lot Thank of you. other ventures I know you're into. You've stu- you, you studied law. You're a college professor. <laughs> you've done all <laughs> kinds of cool things in your life. So thank you so much for joining me. Oh, I've been looking forward to this for a while. This is awesome. awesome. I'm, I'm very, I'm very, you know what I'm really excited about too is that Inside the Bunker is now a part of the Go Tell Someone network. Uh the reason we, the reason I even started the Go Tell Someone Network is I had all these friends around that had were doing these cool sports related, uh, pop culture related podcasts, and it was like, why don't we just create a hub where everybody can just go there and find something for themselves, right? Exactly, and I appreciate it. I I've been um, very fortunate. I know uh, for those that don't don't know, we met through the uh, twenty. It's actually the twenty four universe page on Facebook, and basically yeah. got into doing that, and, and just met and became became. Friends, so I mean, it, it was awesome. It's a great community. Um, so a couple Absolutely. things. So we're here to talk some twenty four today. Oh, beautiful! So, yeah, of course. I mean, it's all about <laughs> twenty four. So um, twenty four for me really changed the landscape of television. I mean, when it I aired agree. back in two thousand one, it was just a great. I mean, that's a great television series. It was revolutionary in any way. Um, before that, I actually only watched movies, so it was a very. I, I was yeah, not yeah. a fan of television in general. So what? Really, not at all. Not, not real, not really. No, I, I mean, not, I, not a lot. Wow. I watched a lot of comedies, but I've never in, was into really drama, n- never anything like that. So, what got you personally into Twenty Four? Were you a fan from the beginning, or was it something that you got into later? 
I was a fan from, I want to say, day half. <laughs> because I uh, it, I had friends that were telling me, you've got to watch this show. It, it, it looks really good. It's very well done. And so I decided somewhere around, I want to say, January. I think I decided, January of 2002, I dropped in on the show. And it was the uh, Terry... Uh, and again, hopefully I'm not ruining anything for you, but Terry running away, uh, and it was amnesia was involved. There was, there were, there were, there was amnesia was definitely involved. And so I dropped in on that episode and I remember going, what? Like, I, I don't, I don't get this. Yeah. That's very much. I need, I need, I need, so I, so I stopped watching. Well, I stopped watching at that point. And I said, like, clearly I, I need to know what's going on before, you know, this happens. And so I just said, I'm going to wait. I'm not, not going to try to jump into the show. I, there's no reruns. I can't pick it up. So I just waited. And they released the DVD. What we found out through doing the podcast is that the DVD strategy came about because they said when they got greenlit for season two, they realized people have to know what happened in season one. So they rushed, Fox rushed the DVD set out so that people could get hooked on it. Uh, yeah, over the summer the first if it's if not the first show to ever do that like yeah exactly shows yeah was, you know later and plus dvd was kind of a newer medium i know it came out in the late 90s so the, the only box set i had of, uh, on dvd at that point was the x files season one and i probably oh, paid a hundred dollars for it way too much but anyway <laughs> so so i so i i waited until it came out and i went to the local video store and i rented the first two discs which was the first eight hours of the show and I said, "All right, let's see. Let's see if this is any good." Uh, I watched four episodes of on the first disc, and I took it back to the rental place and said, "Forget it." And I ran to Walmart and I bought it because I said, "This uh, four episodes in, I knew that I was hooked, but I knew that I had to own this thing. Like it was already that good. Already, you know, move, as you said, you're a movie guy. Twenty four was movie level TV, like yeah. I'd never seen before." And that's what, that's yeah. what I, that's the point I was making. I, I got into it, actually, my mom, of all people, uh, she was mm -hmm. a fan before me. I did not watch the first season I live. I was like, what is this show? She was, she actually asked for Mother's Day, or it was her birthday, one of the two. She asked for the DVD set um, to, to watch again. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll pick up this show. I was, I was actually working at, uh, at FYE, which is for, oh, yeah. no, oh, I worked, you know, music, FYE. music, movies and stuff like that. So I actually picked it up. And I got it for her, and she's like, honey, you have to watch this. You have to watch this. I was like, okay, okay, I'll, I'll watch it. I don't even know. Kiefer Sutherland, I've seen him in Lost Boys. I've seen him in Flatliners. I've seen him in all these great, you know, movies. Right. I yeah. watched it literally, I think, a day and a half, binge watched it. And then from then on, I watched live. It was an event at my house every single Monday night. But, yeah, no, it's a great, I mean, that's a great experience. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 would, I would argue it's one of the first truly event series. Yes. Uh, where you where you literally like we were the, the next day people that were into it were talking about it um, and as much as I envy the people that b get to binge it now wherever they can there was still something about and, and I'm gonna sound like an old man there's gray here uh, I got but, you. I, I, there's, <laughs> but there's something about he seeing it week to week and having to wait and and having some major cataclysmic thing happen at the end and then go well we're off for four weeks or you know, like, <laughs> yeah that was the so, worst frustrating but 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 it, it kept it kept me tethered right it kept me you know wanting to know what was going on next um and i'd only ever experienced that with movies because i am a movie guy too yeah um you know like I, I remember the first films i saw in the theater i saw i remember you know seeing popeye in the theater with my parents after school one night i remember like i have very deep emotions tied into those experiences and i really believe that film and tv and music too uh, have the ability to take us somewhere and help us to at least understand and experience uh, better than than we can, right? Yeah. Like it puts us, it puts us in the, a good film or TV show puts us in the in the middle of something and helps us to understand kind of what's going on around it. Yeah. Almost virtual, you know, virtual entertainment. And twenty four came out. I mean, as we all know, it came out you know right after yeah. nine eleven. And I mean, that was the show everybody needed at that moment in time. You know, an American hero. Yeah, yeah. You know, basically. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Uh, so what yeah. what made you start the 20 Years of 24 podcast? I know this is the 20th anniversary of 24. And for those that don't mm -hmm. know, it came out in 2001. So we're in 2021. So 20 years. What made you really decide this is something I want to do? This is, you know, something I want to, an avenue I want to pursue. Well, it started uh, with the domain. Because I, I generally start everything with the domain. I'll get an idea. I, I'm... Uh, <laughs> To, to my benefit and to my detriment, I'm an ideas person. 
and I'm always, oh, we should do that, or we should get into this. Uh, I actually have a, an idea that just came out recently that for the first time in a long time, my wife went, "That's a you're onto something. Because <laughs> I, I just spitball all the time. I'm like, oh, we should do this, we should do that. And I've, as I get older, I learn which ones not to jump on and which ones to let go, and then which ones have real value. And so it was about, I think, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, somehow I found John Kassar's email address. And, I, and John Kassar is the showrunner uh, for 24, but he's so much more than that. Uh, he's the historian. He's the, you know, he's, he's a lot of the driving force behind 24. Right. And so I found his email address and I just dropped him a note using my legal capacity to some degree uh, to say, hey, I've got this idea. I, I think I'd purchased, before I even contacted him, I purchased 24convention.com. And so I'm always trying to protect myself before I jump into something. So I contacted John and I said, hey, this is what I'm thinking. I said, I'm in Windsor, which is a border city with Detroit. Uh, you know, you're Canadian. There's a lot of Canadians involved in 24. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of both people on both sides of the border. I want to do an actual convention uh, for the show at the 10 year point. And he got back to me like within a day, which was great saying, hey, that's a great idea. Let's keep talking about this. And we had some conversations back and forth at that time. But at the end of the day, we said, logistically it's kind of crazy to try to get everybody together i can you know, an actor can't guarantee they're not going to be on set you know four months from now or a year from now and and so and then just the logistics of it kind of made my head explode so i decided okay i'm going to put this on hold but i never really let go of that so then we come up on 21 20 years and same thing two years ago ish i bought 20 years of 24.com uh, and then I started to formulate how we could do a physical physical convention. Uh, you know, if we can get some of the actors, if we can get some of the crew. And so I started talking to potential sponsors about doing an event again back in my hometown. Uh, and then COVID hit, <laughs> so the physical uh, convention goes out the window at least for the you know for the time being, uh, because now you're adding again from a legal standpoint all these extra restrictions and all that kind of stuff. Right. So I scrapped the physical convention, but then I started looking at the fact that as of last year, everybody knows what Zoom is, right? It's not, you know, it's, it's Zoom has become like Google where people, you know, use it as a, as a verb. You should have bought stock on it beforehand. I, should, I <laughs> wish I had. <laughs> I wish I had a DeLorean <laughs> to take me back to about January last year and I would have bought stock in Zoom and plexiglass. Yep. Absolutely. Plexiglass and Zoom. That's where my money would have gone. Face masks. Yeah, everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so then it morphed into that. And then I said, well, I started doing my own This People in Your Neighborhood podcast, right? As soon as kind of things shut down, I said, there's no excuses now. I can't, I've got these ideas for doing a podcast, but there's the, all my, all the barriers that were up are now gone. Now, now if I don't do it, it's my own fault. And actually one of my bands was doing a, 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 a podcast called Cheap Flight. And the reason it was called Cheap Flight was one was in Texas, one was in Milwaukee, and one was in Toronto. So it was a cheap flight. It saved them a whole lot of money by just doing a podcast. Right. And so I got on their podcast, and we we, we actually recorded a project during during this last year and a half. Uh, but I got into it, and I was like, I was bit. We, we I was in this podcast, and we were we were having a great time. And so I said, there's people in my neighborhood in my life that have done some really cool things. And so I just started asking friends, you know, who are all home. <laughs> do you want to do you want to talk about what you're doing? And uh, we had some, we've had some great fun with that. Leading up to this year, it just made sense to do a 20 Years of 24 podcast. Thinking initially we'll get maybe four or five people involved from the show. Uh, we'll stretch it out over the next eight months, and then maybe we can do the convention. Uh, and then Justin got involved. Yeah. And then Justin's a fireball. <laughs> Justin asked me, who do you want to get on the show? And I listed off a couple people, and we had them within like a week. Yeah, and those who don't know Justin, he is, I, I think, was it Howard Gordon, actually, during yes. the who's, who's one of the yeah. writer and executive producers of the show, said he's probably the biggest 24 fan in the world, which I know those that actually know me personally are probably like, really? But no, he this this guy, he's crazy as far as his passion for the show. Oh, yeah. He's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then it, it ramped up the show by, you know, we've talked to 40 people. Like, we just, I just talked to uh, Rayco Aylesworth last week, which, awesome. which was our 40th guest. Uh, that was either cast or crew from the show, which, again, I was looking at maybe 10 maximum. Right. 
and now we're at 40 and we're still going we're, we're starting to book some stuff for the fall so it's just it, it really has blown my mind the the receptiveness of uh, and, the, and the, the graciousness of the people that were involved in the show and uh how excited they are to talk about it this many years later and that's and that's one thing I, i've noticed about just everybody that's been involved in 24 has been super gracious i know on your end and i know just in general they just love talking about the show 20 years later yeah. like the people like uh, i know um leslie hope you know that was one of your first guests that you yes it was. the first episode that you aired but she was i mean she hasn't been in the show in 20 years so i mean right for her right. to still actually be like passionate and, and enough to actually join the show is, is very awesome do you personally have i i know i know Kiefer was like a bucket list item for you or yes, a bucket was, list person for you to interview i should say who is your favorite? Do you have a favorite interview you've done so far? Or do you like them all in certain ways? Like children, you know, you don't have a favorite. But <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I, I thought about that too today. Because, you know, it's like, do I really have one that I think was... Each one was has been unique in its own way. And has been fun in its own way. Like um, Alicia Cuthbert. Uh, you know, like I'm a big fan of Happy Endings, which is a show she did after, after 24. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure if she was going to be willing to talk about it. I wasn't sure if um, it was going to fit into what we were doing. And, and, and she was amazing. Like, honestly, Alicia Cuthbert is, is, was so uh, engaged and so, you know, excited. And she, and she said, I was so young when the show started. Like, it really kind of helped me in my career, but also helped me understand the business uh, more. Talking to Katie Sackoff was another really, really fun interview. Uh, that we couldn't talk about the Mandalorian, but right. uh, we talked about everything else she's done because she's she's done a whole lot of stuff. So uh, I don't know that I really have a favorite because each each one has its own flavor. Uh, with James Morrison, for example, we started talking about the philosophy of acting, and it really became like a master class in acting, uh, which was a different flavor than some of the other ones have had. So it I don't know it's 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 just been a, a crazy ride. Yeah, listening crazy through ride. it, I mean, like you said, I know Alicia Cuthbert actually was one of my favorite. Um, interviews as well and i know john cassar for me personally I yeah just, yeah his dvd feature for those that have the dvds that watch yeah. the actual special features i mean his his documentaries and his commentary on the show is just master class he's amazing what was your one moment in the show that you were watching where you're like this show's different um that's something i always ask because it's funny if you ask uh different 24 fans i mean everybody has a favorite moment a favorite scene a favorite season yeah and you might get 10 different answers. You know, if you're like, hey, I right, need to right. rank, the, rank the seasons for me. Like, what's your favorite season? You would get 10 different answers, which most shows don't have that luxury. I mean, everybody knows certain, you know, most shows have a specific season. That's like, okay, this is by far the best season. What right, yeah. moment or what season of 24 is your absolute favorite? I, I, <laughs> I'm going to be difficult because I've got two. And they both, they both happened in the first season. Um, I don't know if it's absolute favorite, but certainly the ones, as you said, that got me hooked, that said, this show is different than anything else I've ever seen. And the first was what I call the Alan York moment, oh. uh, when Janet is in the hospital and they've, they've, you've spent half the show invested in this father who's trying to find his daughter and you've gone, I think it was eight or nine hours at that point. And this, this guy is just, he just wants to find his daughter. He doesn't know where she is. She's out with Kim and, and then she's, she winds up in the hospital and she's lying in the hospital and, and dad goes in to see her. And the first thing that Janet says to the guy who's clearly not her dad is who are you? Yeah. And, and I remember, I remember just like, and again, this was like, it wasn't like I could pause it and, and freak out. I had to kind of sit to the end because that was pretty much the end of the show. But I was like, are you kidding me? Are you, you really have taken this on this literal ride in the man's car. We've trusted this man for all these hours and he's not even who he says he is. Yeah, that was, that was one of the top ones. I was, I think that is actually yeah. one of the first big twists in the show. Yeah, yeah. My jaw was just on the floor and I was like, this isn't TV like I've ever seen. And then the second one was, was David Palmer when, um, I can't think of her name, his assistant came into the office and basically was trying Patty. to seduce him. Was Patty, Patty, yes, thank you. Patty. And Patty came in with the purpose of seducing him, uh, and with the full blessing of, of Sherry, and, and uh, came in. And you you you've, you've seen this scenario before. You've seen politicians do exactly you know make the wrong choice in this moment. And when he said, "Get out, you're fired," like I, I, that was that was another to me was a, a thing that differentiated the show from anything else I'd ever seen. 
it's, because it was like, oh wow, he he actually made a, a, a choice of integrity. Yeah, and I mean, and most characters in television, like you said, would have fallen on the sword there. And just, yeah, yeah, and just yeah, because I mean, Sherry was trying to you know obviously get him to do something he shouldn't be probably be doing. Right, <laughs> right. But uh, is that is season one considered? your favorite season because it got you into the show or do you have a favorite season? I, I think so. I, I, say the, I say the same thing about uh, this one I say about American Horror Story uh, is that that first season was, both those first seasons were so jarring from a from a trust standpoint. Like you just, you know, like I said, you trust the filmmaker, you trust the director, you trust the story and then when they, they pull the rug right out from under you, right in the middle of it. <laughs> right, right. And I think that's, I mean, the premise of 24 was just an, a unique pre premise. And I mean, that that's what got it. For me, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I'm, a, I'm one of those fans. Like, I think the odd number seasons for me are my favorite. Like, one, two, oh, yes, five, yes. seven, and nine, what, Live Another Day. Yeah. Those are my personal yeah. favorites, which, and then some people will be like, season two is their all time favorite. But that's, yeah, that's yeah. Me. I think the moment that got me into 24 was besides the having a cliffhanger every single episode, I mean, most right. shows. I mean, NCIS, you know, they have they have a beginning, you know, oh, this is the, the pull to get you into the show. Okay, you have the yep. whole episode, you finish, and then by the end of the episode, they've pretty much solved the problem. Uh, and, right. and that's yeah. why, yeah. like, and nothing against NCIS or fans of that, but I personally, you know, that's not, I, I was like, oh, it's very boring. It can get very boring really quick. But yeah, yeah. I think um, Terry getting, them actually killing her was what got yeah. me to be like, the show is different. And yeah. my wife, actually, when we met, we watched through, she had never seen 24, and she was one of the fortunate ones. I mean, we met in 2012, so she was actually able to binge watch it with me. We watched it. She actually watched that scene and was like, I'm not, I don't want to watch this anymore. <laughs> She's like, I don't yeah, right, right. want to watch this anymore. <laughs> I'm done. I, don't, I, I have no interest in seeing it. But I'm like, just just stick with it. Stick with it. I'm telling you, like, the, the character yeah, yeah, yeah. of Jack Bauer, but the other thing I love about it is how every season was like a reboot in a way. Like, you know, you have right. new cast yeah. members yeah. every season. New cast. Season. It's an, it, yeah. There's been a time jump, which I, I I love that there's a time jump every season. I mean, obviously they couldn't have done 24, you know, days in a row or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, right after each other, but it was it was very very well done, and that's pretty much what I think got me to be like, wow, this show is special. This is something I'm going to probably love for the rest of my life. So, well, I mean, speaking of that scene too, I mean, it was a personal thrill to be able to ask Kiefer directly about that scene, you know, because because the rumor had always been that he he didn't like that ending and i and i'd heard that for years but i also i heard it from different interviews we had done but to ask him directly how he felt about terry dying and he said he, he said it was he said the comment was i went to the head of fox and i said we can't do that uh and i want my i want my my position noted for the record and then her response was what record we're not in court what are you talking about it's like, it's like in baseball when they when they do the I'm playing this game under protest. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? so, sure. Uh, okay. That's that sounds good to me. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And he and he really was the anchor. He continued to be the anchor of the show for sure. But yeah, it was just kind of funny to to hear from him directly. Yeah, I didn't like that ending at all, and I thought that was going to be the end of the show. And instead, what that what that moment did was it it gave you reason to watch season two, the first episode, and then season three, and then season four. Because if if you're willing to do that, if a show's willing to, to take it that far, you have no idea what they're going to do next. Right. Which is pretty amazing. Right. Yeah, and the character amazing. development, I think, in the show is just them top notch. Yeah. You watch Jack Bauer from his first scene, you know, having chess with Ken to where he ends in season nine and living up yeah. day. It's just, it's yeah. total night and day, which is great. And it, it and it's crazy, too, what 24 has done for me, too, is that it, it creates a level of excellence that I see, okay, Glenn Morshower is doing The Resident. Okay, I'm going to watch The Resident. Right. Uh, I mean, I'd be interested in it, but I may get into it because I know that there's a cast member from 24 that's involved. Yeah. Or the show Nashville is another good example. There are multiple people uh, from Connie Britton to uh, oh, to Jeffrey Nordling. All these people that that were on 24 uh, on 24 wound up on the show Nashville. It's like playing uh, a game when you're like watching. A, yeah, when you're watching the television, like, he was in 24. Yeah. He was in 24. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we always play that game. I'm like, I was like, who was that? Even bit characters, you know, someone that was maybe playing random terrorists in season two. You know, you're like, yeah. oh. Okay, I remember him. He was in 24. Yeah. I don't remember who he played. Let me go look that up on IMDb real quick. So, right, right. I mean, there's so much TV out there that I need to have some kind of filter that says, okay, this one's worth checking out, this one's not. And 24 is that is kind of that meter for me. So, right, right. I'm a little obsessed. 
I'm Although, a little obsessed. I, I am not... too. I mean, as you see behind me, for those on on <laughs> watching this, I love it. I, had, I also I have a 20 years 24 cup here that I purchased, so that that was also great and awesome. Like I said, thank you. Looks for good. Part of the podcast, I appreciate it. It looks like it looks like it fits in the collection really well. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is your um, thoughts on a possible? I know, I know, Justin has been passionate about this. Yeah, and yeah. we've talked about it some some off camera and stuff. The 24 revival. Do you see 24 in any sense of the word coming back, whether it be a movie, whether it be a television show, book, comic book, whatever? Do you see it? I, I'm in the, just for personal reasons, I think it will. I think right, yes, whether I it's do. three years, four years from now, I believe in some way it will come back in some form or media. I believe it yeah. will. What is your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts have been tempered by the interviews we've done over the last several months, too, because... You know, it's been several years since Live Another Day. Yeah. Uh, we're talking seven years now, some, somewhere in there? Uh, yeah, seven years, yes. Yeah, seven years. So it's been a while since Live Another Day. And I remember seeing uh, an interview, and I can't find it to save my life, uh, but there was an interview that Hollywood Reporter does these roundtables. And they brought together John Hamm from Mad, Mad Men, uh, Breaking Bad, I um, can't think of his name, but, but they had all the kind of the lead actors from all these different shows and there was a round table and they could ask them questions and Kiefer was one of the people in that discussion mm -hmm. Brian Cranston okay. so they're all talking about their shows and there's one point where Kiefer stops and he says because they're all talking about doing 10 12 episode seasons and this is before live another day and they're having this conversation and he stops and he says well how many do you do and John Hamm's like 10 13 and he went around the room and everybody was doing it between like 8 and 13 episodes and he went, I got to rethink this or something. Like that. He, had this, he had this real revelation. Like it's, it's like the light went on in his head. Like, why are we doing 24? Like in season one. Yeah, that was, I was, if you look at, if you look at Kiefer in the first episode, he's kind of a baby. Like he's, he's oh, yeah. a young, young, I'm 52 and I can't do half of what I could do two years ago. <laughs> so I don't feel, uh, you know, and again, this won't be popular among the fans, but I don't think expecting a 24 show with Kiefer full time is reasonable and you and he's not the kind of person the character you want to see behind a desk either right right like if they bring 24 back and Jack Bowers behind a desk for 80 percent of the show you're gonna fans are gonna lose their minds on that right uh, I I think what you could do and I I believe this again this is my theory and if Fox is listening uh, we want to get uh, some compensation for these ideas that we keep throwing around on the podcast absolutely um, Star Wars uh, a Star Wars story, Rogue One, right? So they didn't make it part of the original nine. They made it a separate, so that they could call anything, you know, a Star Wars story, and then they could spin it off into a different direction. Right. I think I think one of the issues with uh, Legacy it was Legacy, right? Yes, twenty four Legacy. Yes, twenty four Legacy. Twenty seventeen uh, was that they didn't call it a Star Wars story, or sorry, a twenty four story. If you had said it's a twenty four story, then then the fans wouldn't have said, oh, we expect Jack Bauer is going to come back. Um, so I think if you had almost like a 24 universe, you know, almost like, like an MCU, you, you, where you have different stories that, that kind of operate around the CTU universe, I yeah. think you could do it. And then I think you could have Jack Bauer make an appearance. Right. Um, I, I think that, I think that that certainly was something that could work in the long run of, uh, like I said, it, it's, a, it's if you watch those episodes now, it's extremely physical, and Kiefer does a lot of his own stunts. Yeah, um, I know he said in his interview with you, he said he was he's like, yeah, I know you asked him, you know, would or Justin, I think, asked him, would you be willing to come back and do twenty four? Yeah. He says, uh, yeah, yeah, I just hope they do it before I have to have a cane, you know, because <laughs> exactly. I mean, he is getting up there in age, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you watch if you watch the Fugitive, I recommend anybody finds the Fugitive. Um, it was physical, but it wasn't physical to the same level that Jack Bauer was. Right. Like, he did a lot of running, a lot of fighting, but it wasn't to the same level. It was probably to a level that he was comfortable with. Right. I know he, bro he broke a couple bones, I think, making yeah. uh, season two of the fight scene. You know, he got hit in the face with a with a gun that <laughs> went off and everything. So, I mean, he, yeah. he, the thing about Kiefer, I mean, he is a very physical actor, but like you said, yeah, it's been, I mean, 20 years. He was, he's in his 50s now. So, I mean, again. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and, and, the, and the thing is, too, is, is, Going, I'm sorry, pushing back to my podcast to our podcast. The idea is that um, the more we talk to people from the show, you can hear them get excited about the possibility of doing something again. It was like, it was like you could, like we're starting the engine again, 
and they're talking about it and they're and they're really nostalgic about it and they're you know like one of the my, one of my favorite moments of doing that podcast the podcast was when John Kassar said, "Is it okay if we keep talking?" Like I was, I was trying to be careful of his time. You know, I don't want to overextend my my welcome. And he stopped and he said, "Oh, can we keep going? This is fun." <laughs> I'm like, yes, yeah. And like that's, that's why you had to cut it into two episodes. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that was again to me that it, that means I'm doing something right with this this podcast that we're doing. Uh, but to hear the nostalgia and to hear people get excited about the show again after 20 years. Uh, I have a hard time believing that they're not just going to sit on that now. Um, that we may have been involved in stirring something up, uh, even in, in some minimal way. If we have if we have any part in helping to get this thing up and running again, um, I'd be very happy about that. That would be, that but would be I, awesome. As they've said, the story has to be as good, if not better, than the original. Right. right. Nobody wants to see it come back and, and you go, eh. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. I think with Legacy, like I said, I actually enjoyed Legacy for what it yeah, was. Yeah. Um, a lot of yep. people I know gave it no chance because, you know, Jack Bauer wasn't in it. And the way I right. looked at it, and I even had conversations back in 2017 when it came out with fans of, yeah, like, yeah. give it a chance. Nobody knew what 24 was in season one. Nobody cared, okay, Kiefer Sutherland, he's a t yeah. he's a movie actor, whatever. He's doing a television show. Nobody cared. Um, right. But then you didn't know that character until they built up on it. And I thought it, I thought it was a good, good character. I mean... So I, yeah, yeah, I agree. I just didn't feel like it didn't get the chance it deserved. Um, yeah, so I agree. With that being said, we're going to. Yeah. I'm going to in closing, since you're one of my first guests. Uh, I have a few. I think I may have you actually as the first episode. So I'm 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 debating on that right now. That's we're an honor. Explain, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to explain. I'm going to explain the concept. What I want to do uh, at the end of every episode is ask, "What would you bring with you inside the bunker?" So it's like a ranking <laughs> list, okay? Right. So with you, and it will be themed for whatever guests we decide to bring on, so whatever they're into. So one thing I wanted to ask you, Ryan, is yes. what what five movies or television shows would you bring with you inside the bunker? If you had five television shows, movies, what would you bring in? <laughs> I, I may break the rules a little bit for the first one. Sorry. Okay. No, that's um, fine. I, I'm, a, I'm a rule breaker myself. I'm, that's You're totally fine. Are you an X Files fan at all? Yes, I am. Okay, do you remember the episode where Fox had to uh, give his his wishes? He had the genie. Yes, and he had yes. I and ever since I saw that episode, I uh, this question I would used to be very cavalier about, and now I'm like, oh, I got to really think this through because Fox Mulder messed it up, and I don't want to mess it up like he did. It was it was if you if you haven't seen that, you people go find that episode. It was a great episode. Uh, anyway. Uh, so I, I took your five because it really was a lot of work to narrow it down to five. But I broke it down to five from this from nostalgia from childhood, and then five, uh, you know, from stuff that I've watched now. If that's okay. Okay. No, oh, that's absolutely. Right. So I was going to go with Empire Strikes Back. Okay. It's always at the top of my list uh, from my from nostalgia. Uh, the Marx Brothers Silver Collection, which I have right here. Oh, on awesome. Blu-ray, it's amazing. Uh, Marx Brothers are brilliant. Uh, definitely this one too, the Looney Tunes collection. Uh, that shapes a lot of who I am. Uh, the Twilight Zone, the original series. Yes, that was right that there. Was so I think that's four, and I'm gonna have to go with the Dark Knight. I think the Dark Knight. Uh, that's, that's a good one. What's yeah, funny I, is, um... I can I cannot stop watching that movie once I start it. Yeah, and, and Dark Dark Knight was fantastic, as well as Empire Strikes Back. Those are actually, what's funny, two of probably my top ten, I would say. I didn't make a top five list. It's like you, like I was talking to you earlier. We yeah, it's, yeah. it's a very hard list. I mean, if, you, if you're into television, movies, anything, I mean, 24 is up there for me. Because, I mean, I could cheat. And if I had, you know, oh, I can only bring five shows. I mean, that's over 200 episodes of television. So I could always right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. cheat a little bit. 24 okay. is definitely definitely the top of the list because, as you said, I can take all those seasons with me, including Legacy. I'm going to take all those seasons with me uh, to have, if that's all I watch, Mr. Show. Mr. Show, uh, I Better Call Saul is amazing. I'm a big fan of Bob Odenkirk. But I think if you watch Mr. Show, you'll understand Better Call Saul a whole lot better, just in kind of Bob Odenkirk's origins with David Cross. Uh, Watchmen is another... Another one that I highly recommend. I've watched it three times through, yes. and I'm probably going to watch it again. Uh, and I didn't like the movie, uh, but the, the series itself is is pretty amazing. 
Uh, Arrested Development is definitely on that list. And and The Passion of the Christ. I really think if you're going to take on a topic like that, I think that they, they did a good job of making that movie as visceral and as realistic as it could be. And again, probably not the most popular one on the list, but boy, that one that one really gets me every time I, I watch it. Absolutely. So, and, you know, I mean, yeah. and like I said, on, on here we don't judge, so it's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have some, you know, guilty pleasure shows and movies and everything else, so I get it. Cool. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what yours are, for sure. Yeah. I, I Actually, what's funny, I'm going to air an episode where I talk about that. That's actually coming up very, very soon. So, Good. So okay, awesome. For those of you that are interested in, my, in what I'm doing. Okay. Um, is there anything else, Ryan, that you would like to plug uh, in general? <laughs> yeah, I, I have no problem doing that. I mean, Go Tell Someone podcast is, like I said, the network of podcasts that I mentioned right at the beginning. Uh, they're friends that have, they were doing cool stuff. And again, it, Inside the Bunker is one of those podcasts that, that we're happy to have as part of the Go Tell Someone network uh, worldwide it sounds impressive, but really, it's we've got we've got one called Check the Credits. That's uh, my friends reviewing albums, the, an artist's worst album. Uh, we have a fantasy sports league podcast on there. We have one called Average Jerks. Uh, go tell someone podcast. There's something for everybody there. Uh, it's really cool and really unique, and um, and we're having a lot of fun doing it. We're adding we're actually adding yours and another one this week uh, to the to the network. So we're building it. Based a little bit on the um, the Funny or Die model a little bit, and um, I can't think of Scott Ackerman's podcast. Anyway, the, the idea of, of creating just a mall, making a hub, and people can go and find. Because, I mean, some of my favorite podcasts are, are Mark Maron, uh, Michael Rosenbaum, uh, Inside of You. Like, there's, there's just some great podcasts out there. And, and all I want to do is help the people that I know, the people in my neighborhood, to promote our podcast more and help people that like mine they might like yours they might like some of the other ones that are on there so that's really the heart of, of that and then the other thing is 20 years of 24.com where you can find out about the convention that's happening on november 6th uh, of this year which is actually the 20 year anniversary of 24 uh you can get involved in that we're going to have guests from the show uh we're, we're starting to actually book those right now so it's getting pretty exciting and uh so yeah the, you can get all the information at 20 years of 24.com Awesome, awesome. So, uh, thank you, Ryan, for so much for joining me. Um, I appreciate you joining me inside the bunker today, and I look Absolutely. forward to listening to all of your ventures. You've been, like I said, a great friend to me. Um, you were helping to inspire me doing this in the first place. I was something I've been wanting to do for a while now, so I really appreciate the support and for coming. That, that makes me that makes me feel good. I, I listen to your uh, NFL picks for this <laughs> for the fall, and I'm not a sports guy, but it's nice. That, that I can go to your podcast now and, and I can actually sound somewhat intelligent because I've listened to what you said and, and your analysis of what the season's going to be like. Uh, I look forward to those for sure. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you yeah. so much. And Absolutely. I look forward to talking to you soon. And there you have it. That was my interview with Ryan Richardson from 20 Years of 24. Please support the Kickstarter. It's 24convention.com. I will leave a link on Spotify as well as YouTube for those of you that want to contribute. It's a great convention. I'm super excited for it to hopefully get going. It's November 6th of this year. I wanted to thank Ryan again for being a great guest and for also helping me get it this venture underway. Really excited to release some more content for you. Please like and subscribe for those of you that follow me on Twitter. Please follow me and you know go there for updates that's where i post all my updates on my videos i also you know try to interact with different people and also you know i'm actually easier to get a hold of that than through my email it's inside the bunker it's one word just follow me on there as well as facebook i will leave a link for that as well inside the bunker podcast at gmail.com is my email so if you want to talk some 24 or have any thoughts about the episode please let me know i would very much appreciate it. So thank you for joining me for another episode of Inside the Bunker, and have a great and wonderful day.